Greetings, Sir and Sirettes, and welcome back to the Stanley Parable with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to our rather empty office space. In the last episode, we did a full run being rather disobedient and trying to choose every choice which went against the narrator's divine will. But this time, we're going to do things a little bit more obediently. Let's actually choose the choices in which have been chosen for us ahead of time by the narrator. The narrator knows best for us and I'm sure will not steer us to our when timely Stanley demise. Came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I agree we'll enter the door on the left. And be nosy at the lovely plant in there and very very shiny screen. Art. Okay, nothing really out of the ordinary so far. Hello. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Rest in peace, Franz? Cabal planning. There is a lot of very interesting things on here. Termination Tuesdays. My favourite Tuesdays. Weekly targets admin, the more boring of options. Pranking floors meeting. What to do about 432. Don't tell 4... four oh, of course, because all of the people working here are actually numbers rather than people. Other than Stanley. Stanley's both a number and a person. Not cost efficient. Wow. Standardized graphs. That's fantastic. Push for funding for re research and development of new coffee machine. I agree with this. And it's even got a tick. Well done, everyone else. Okay, enough of trying to read all that. Ooh, hello. Solving interpersonal, interpersonal conflicts. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee, like yourself, but... A boat. Mitosis. Pollution. Less... All. Or air, I think. What is even this about? Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Oh. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time, every day, with no expect... Yeah, with no expectation. I am dyslexic. Slow down. This is not good for me. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passive-aggressively on other co-workers. Resent co-workers. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header, and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and... Oh, I'm the, I'm the most disunique. Okay, let's continue. Enough reading. Reading is for the weak. Ooh, the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. We will obey him this time, but just this once. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. There are so many different options we can be taking. Oh, wow. His boss is a very luxurious area. Oh, come on, I want to check out the executive bathroom. Fine, then. But I heard that they have toilet paper made of unicorn fur. It is so soft for your little behind. We have computers, we have a glass, we have something I can't read ba upside down, backwards, upside down. Set oh, come on! Re fine, I'll have to read it upside down then. Business time. Is that really it? I expected something to be funny. Amuse me game! That is why you were here so late at night. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. 2845. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I want to be obedient. This for, for this run, I want to comply with his wishes. However, 
I can't see what else we can do in here, so... Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code Ooh. by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh. Oh! I literally missed that. That's kind of amazing. Hello! I see lights. I see darkness. Ooh, I see a weird path here. No, it's... Oh! Yeah, I'm behind it. I am behind it. However, I'm stuck. Okay. Well, that was a pleasing jaunt behind the giant generator thing. Down. Yep, yeah, this is definitely down. Certainly not up. Maybe it's a little bit to the left. Can't quite tell. Maybe I'm just cocking my head to the side a little bit. Could have used a different phrase. The internet is not the most clean-minded. Tilting my head. Into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he Ooh. felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? Not really. I like this my job. This question would not go unanswered for long. Me being Stanley, of course. I'm role-playing as Stanley. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. But... But there's an escape route. Oh, We're being good. Gee, I wonder if I should press this. The lights rose Ooh, on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he did have I? the strength to find out? I was actually wondering what they were, so you told me they're TV screens at least. Through my knowledge. Are they meant to be screens? Seems a bit wasteful, honestly, considering. Now the monitors jumped to life, Ooh, their hello. true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many Ooh. individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Did, did Stanley really think he wasn't being monitored working something like this? Stanley is not the most intelligent of creatures. Stanley presses the button. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really Fire? been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Ask him that. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labelled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I'm assuming we're meant to go through there. However, there are different options. So we, we are going to have to come back and do all the different options, like, for instance, going down rather than up, choosing the escape path, which is so far the one I actually really want to check out, and other things like that. Now, I really should have gone the obvious way. However, there is a thing here. What's this? Four. What on earth is the... Oh, hello. Why do I have a bizarre feeling these are going to be numbered in order? And if so, where are the others? Because that's the only one I saw before that, so here's another... Oh, there you go. One. Okay. Two. Where's three? 
Okay, that's four. Where is three, and how many times have I likely looked at it already? Oh, it's over there. Okay, I can see on top of, well, on the lockers? It could be lockers. That's a five! You might be three. Okay. Three. Why do I think I'm I'm disobeying the narrator by doing this? Oh dear. If I have, I may have to quickly run back here again to actually get the proper ending. Four. Or at least the proper obedient ending, actually doing what he says. Because clearly he's controlling your life, so even with the mind control turned off, you just did his will and thus were controlled. I get that's kind of the point here. And five. Is there another one I'm missing? Ooh. Glowy. I'm clearly missing one, aren't I? Hmm. Well, after searching for a little bit too long, honestly, I simply can't find the number six, so I decided to quickly Google it just to see if it really is something obvious I'm missing, and it seems like it's some kind of puzzle. Now, not being someone who really wants things like this spoiled for me, I've decided to leave it and we'll come back to it in the distant future to see if we can possibly solve it. I've got an inkling that it's going to be something to do with all the codes we've been seeing so far because there have been a lot of coded numbers, random orders of numbers, and things jotted down in places, so I can only assume it's something to do with that. But considering I have no idea about that, let's go into the main room. Half expecting a certain neurotoxin loving robot to come down. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Um. Off, I assume, is what we have to do? Oh! Well, well, narrator, did I do what you wanted me to? Well, I hear music, so I can assume so. Oh, I see little blackness of light. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Oh, I still move around. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay on Yeah, like the bussin' room. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was That's not very loud music. power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all Ooh. he needed to know. It was perhaps that the was only oddly thing familiar. worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. The funny thing is, I could disobey him right now. And I can't help it. Well, yell at me then, narrator. Okay, fine, whatever. Yay! Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. So basically, you just played into his plan and thus were controlled by him. So you're still being controlled just the other way, and you even end with Stanley was happy. Just like how it starts with, and Stanley was happy. 
That wasn't exactly unexpected, but still pretty darn awesome. I certainly see why people have been giving this game a lot of hype, and I imagine there are a lot of very secret things that take a lot of effort to find. I think this deserves at least one more run before I start looking into Google and stuff, where we take some of the other options, where we take the escape route, or we take just going downstairs rather than upstairs, little things, rather than the complete disobedience and the complete obedient route. Let's do some middle ground next time, but for now, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's recording, and that has been a very enjoyable run. So thank you so much for watching, if you have enjoyed the and of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that the Stanley Parable, a parable <laughs> is a series you wish to see continued in the future. That is just one of those words I mess up a good 30 to 40% of the time. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye. Next time, I'll turn down the music.